This is what this video is about. I am an optimist. And I'm going to argue that we can create an amazingly inspiring future with tool AI. Max Tegmark was on stage on the first day of the Web Summit in Lisbon to discuss AI alongside Thomas Wolf, the co-founder of Hugging Face, the AI company known for its small language models, available open source. Nicholas Thompson from The Atlantic was the interviewer, posing questions about the risks of AGI, the dangers of open source LLMs, the potential consequences if China becomes the leader in AI and the possibility of robots taking away people's jobs. Max Tegmark, a professor at MIT, has a dual citizenship, as is also from Sweden, a country which is ranked among the most livable and where its residents are ranked among the world's happiest. Tegmark likely brought his Swedish heritage on stage, as he dismissed all apocalyptic views about AI inviting the audience to adopt a more proactive and optimistic outlook on the technology. He made his stance clear from the beginning when asked what the future might look like in 10 years. As a hardcore nerd, the professor has been doing AI research at MIT for many, many years. I really don't like these, this question, what will happen? If it, as if we here are some kind of pathetic passive bystanders just sitting here eating popcorn, you know, waiting for the future to happen to us. Nevertheless, during a second presentation that Tegmark gave on stage by himself, he showed how difficult it is to predict the future without failing. Gen AI went from this to this in just one year with the same prompt. And as recently as six years ago, most of my AI colleagues thought that AI that could master language and knowledge, as well as uh, ChatGPT4, was decades away. And they were, of course, all wrong, because we already have it. And arguably, we've already passed the Turing test. And if you look into the future, the momentum is just amazing. In the US alone, we invested much more in AI last year than in the five years of the Manhattan Project combined, inflation adjusted. So this is collapsing the timelines on prediction markets. So we have to stop being confident that AGI is some kind of long-term thing, or we might get accused of being dinosaurs stuck in 2021. In a recent paper, Tegmark told the AI community that we are reaching AGI at a pace faster than our ability to control it. For some, including the interviewer, this rapid development is a serious risk especially considering that many AI projects leading to AGI are based on open-source AI models. Tecmac, however, does not see this as an issue. He argues that most problems today stem from closed systems, and having a large number of market players can actually increase the trust. Let's listen. I love open source. You know, MIT, where I work, is arguably the, the cradle of open source. And, and who has ever used the MIT license? on your open source <laughs> stuff, right? But, <laughs> this is uh, a nerdy audience, that's awesome. Yeah, Good job, I, audience. Like it. Uh, but I think uh, we should, I think whatever rule, if we as a society decide that there are certain things we should not do, you know, child pornography or some, some code that l lets you build bioweapons, I don't care whether it's open sourced or closed source for profit, we shouldn't do it either way. If, if, if there's two companies, then it just becomes one company that gets so powerful it can start doing regulatory capture over the, the regulators and you can't stop it at all. I, I really think it's important to democratize this power and have it not just all sit and have some tech bros and, and one back dark boardroom in Silicon Valley decide things for the rest of us. Out. Tegmark is not alone in this perspective. Llama, the language model released by Meta AI, is considered one of the best in the industry and is available open source. We have a video explaining why Meta AI releases its LLMs for free to the AI community. Here is a short segment. But we find over and over again that actually the progress in AI is accelerated when it comes to having more people build on our stack, more people come together to develop the science as well as the technology that we need to get there. 
We find that open innovation leads to economic growth. It leads to better and safer product and more responsible development. And every time we open source quality models, we're actually enabling more people to build better solutions. This is good for Meta. This is good for society. This is certainly good for the progress of research. Thomas Wolf of Hugging Face also reminds us that we should not point fingers at open source LLMs only. I think we tend to associate closed model with trust a lot, which is, I think, very wrong. If you, if you make a list today of all the misuse of AI, the deep fakes, the fake news generation, you will be quite surprised that they're pretty much all done with closed source model. So that's the first step, I would say, which is this dichotomy saying open source is dangerous, but closed source is all safe. There won't be any misuse of, op of closed source model, I think is, is very, is very um, wrong. In the, the biggest fear, as it comes up also in other events, is around the AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, an intelligence superior to that of humans, which could eventually control us. The concept, however, should not be so terrifying and might not even be necessary as long as we have the right tools to control it. Here is Tegmark on this matter. Whether we're trying to build a bunch of increasingly awesome tools, and by definition a tool is something that the user can control, like you want your car to be as powerful as possible but you don't want to lose control over it, and in the same way I, I feel strongly we humans, we want to build AI as how powerful as possible and not lose control over it. It's going to benefit us. And if you, if you listen to someone like Jeff Hinton warning that we're going to lose control if we build AGI, you know, he, he's not thinking of this as just another little technology like the internet. He's thinking of it as building a new species that's way, way smarter than us, robots, building robot factories. It's trivial to see how you could lose control over that. Uh, now I think rushing in that direction before we figured out to control it is a really, really bad idea, <clears throat> incredibly dumb. And it's also interestingly unnecessary because I've been going around here talking to people about all the things they're excited about with AI, and it's all tool AI. Someone wants to cure cancer, someone wants to turn CO2 into jet fuel, etc. This is tool AI. We don't need AGI to have all these great benefits. Once, this is not rocket science, once we have safety standards, then companies and entrepreneurs like all of you will start to innovate to meet those standards. Whoever meets them first gets the biggest market share and, and the most basic safety standard red line is obviously that the tool should be a tool. If the company can't convince the, right, the experts that they're going to keep control over their AGI, well, come back when you can, buddy. You know, and in the meantime, we can innovate and do all this other great stuff without having this specter of, of loss of control hanging over us. All other industries, we have safety standards. We have safety standards for medicines, for airplanes. That's why we felt so safe when we flew here. Let's have safety standards for AI as well. The only reason we don't is because AI is a new kid on the block. During his second presentation, Tegmark gave some examples about what it means by tool AI. Here are some examples. Tool AI can save up to a million lives per year on the roads of the world by preventing accidents without AGI. Tool AI can eliminate, can save even more lives in hospitals without AGI. And Tool AI can give us almost free, amazing diagnosis of prostate cancer, lung cancer, eye diseases, you name it, without AGI. Tool AI can help us fold proteins and develop amazing new medicines and even win you the Nobel Prize without AGI. Tool AI can give us great improvements for pandemic prevention, for reducing power consumption, for improving education, democratizing education, and transforming basically every other sector of the economy without AGI. And tool AI can help us accomplish the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals much faster without AGI. So no, AG AGI is not necessary, it's unnecessary right now. In spite of the advantages of the tool AI, Tegmar acknowledges that AGI cannot be controlled. 
but it can also be avoided. Here are his arguments. Well, it is not controllable. We have no idea how to control it. Now, I do want to commend the AGI companies for spending at least a small fraction of their money on trying to solve this unsolved control problem, but they're nowhere close, whatever their press releases say. The biggest success they've had so far is training large language models to not say harmful things, as opposed to making them not want harmful things. And worse, it's pretty clear now that the first AGI would not be a pure large language model. It would be some kind of hybrid scaffolded system which is more agentic, and we have no idea how to control such a thing as it recursively self-improves. There are lots of powerful, profitable technologies that we've successfully banned, from human cloning to bioweapons. And the first step here is always to stigmatize the tech. So if you bump into someone here at Web Summit who tell, who's for AGI, you know, give them a hard time. And, if, and remind them that if they have any kind of influence or agency over the future, they're going to lose it all to AGI. Having the right tools and controlling AGI will also solve geopolitical issues, like the debate about China having access to the technology to develop AI. Uh, I call this geopolitical race to build AGI before the other guy, the hopium war. Because it's fueled by hopium, just delusional hope that AGI can be controlled, which, it, which it, we really don't know how to do. So it's, it's, not, it's not an arms race between the US and China. It's a, a suicide race where whoever gets AGI first is going to lose control of, to this future machine species or whatever and ruin it for everyone. So, so no, uh, this, is a, this is not a game that the Chinese government has any incentive to play. They like their power. Why would they let some Chinese AI company build AGI and so they would lose control? Similarly, the US wants to keep its power. I, I think the US and China both will realize that they just need to make sure that none of their own companies lose control over, a, some, over AGI. And then I think what will happen is, once they've done that independently of each other, just put in national safety standards, just like they did for medicines and airplanes, then they'll talk to each other and be like, hey, wait a minute, how can we make sure North Korea doesn't build AGI or some other country? And then they'll push the rest of the world to sign an AGI moratorium treaty where, where no one does it until the control problem has been solved. That's, how I, that's my positive vision for how this is gonna go. Here, Techmark gives more details about how he sees the relationship evolving between the USA and China. The greatest national security threat, of course, is not another country, but out of control AGI that will be way more powerful than any country has ever been. On the policy side, the US and China unilaterally decide to treat AI just like they treat any other powerful technology industry with binding safety standards, not to appease the rival superpower, but just to, protect, to prevent their own companies from causing harm and building uncontrollable AGI. Next, the US and China get together and push the rest of the world to join them in an AGI moratorium treaty so that AGI isn't built in North Korea or anywhere else. And after that, we get this amazing age of global prosperity fueled by amazing tool AI, like we're discussing here at Web Summit. During the same conversation and talking about AGI, Thomas Wolf of Hugging Face said that 2025 will be the year of robotics. Techmark agrees. And, as we've seen recently with Tesla, building robots is not the issue. But even when they are built and they move around, we should embrace them, not fear them. I, I think you're totally right about robotics. I mean, the difficult thing that's held up robotics has not been our ability to make hinges and motors and actuators, it's the intelligence in them. So it's very natural that when the intelligence itself goes down, gets vastly better, so does robotics. I think uh, the question of what is it that we humans are always going to be better than machines at is the wrong question. We should never 
we, our brains are biological computers. That's what I think. And there's no reason to think that there is anything that we can do now that machines couldn't, in principle, do better if we want that to happen. Um, but we are building this future. So why on earth should we ever build a future where we're forcing ourselves to compete with machines? It's completely you ridiculous. If we find that we get meaning in our lives, for example, from um, raising our children ourselves or working as nurses, we are not forced to replace ourselves by robots and have to compete like that. I think, I think we've, we need to rebrand our species. You know, we call ourselves Homo sapiens because we inflated our ego by being, we're so sapient, we're the smart ones, right? If we're going to live in a world with smarter machines, we need to realize that there's something else that's much more valuable about humanity than our intelligence. And, and ask, okay, what do we want to delegate to machines? I don't think it should be everything. Techmark did not want the audience to leave the room worried about the future, so I took charge of the final comments. And of course, they were positive and reassuring. We've talked about some gloomy stuff that happens if we take the wrong turn, but I, I think is we have to remember the positive side also, you know. It's absolutely amazing how far we have come as a species from being utterly disempowered without science and tech, you know, having a life expectancy of 29 years old, etc. And I think the ultimate empowerment can be AI tools. If we can use ever more powerful AI tools that do what we want to amplify human intelligence, there's basically no limit to how amazing a future we can build together. So let's stay away from geopolitical pissing contests <laughs> that nobody wins and build a great future together.